What we're going to be looking at here is self-constructed assets that a company would have. They would be building their own uh, a piece of equipment here, a piece of machinery, or they could even be building their own building here. But what we have to deal with with these self-constructed assets here are equipment are the costs of building the equipment here. And they would be, uh, we could identify them here as the direct costs and our indirect costs. Now for our direct costs that would be our material and our direct labor. Uh, and those costs are easily traceable here. And then our indirect costs or overhead costs, those costs here are not easily measurable or traceable. So we have a question here. That's the question we have to determine here. What are our indirect costs and how are we going to charge them off here? Now let's look at it here. Now companies can handle these indirect or these overhead costs either by one here assigning no fixed overhead to the cost of the constructed asset here or two they can assign a portion of all the overhead to the uh, construction of this asset or the, during the construction process here whatever portion of overhead we'd have here. Now we're going to just go through an example here where we have a machine and we're going to have uh, the construction costs or the building costs or the manufacturing costs of this machine here and we can identify them here as our direct costs here and our indirect costs and these are only in a typical example that might be included here in, in this construction process. So our direct costs we'd have our materials here and I'm not going to go through all the numbers here but I have them identified here and then for our materials we'd have those identified here and in our direct labor we'd have that identified and then a total direct cost here would in this case was $55,000. Now for our indirect costs and those would be our overhead costs and they would typically include like power, heat, lights, insurance, property taxes, supervision, depreciation, supply. So our total indirect costs here that we have, I have at $172,000 for this example. So, and the fixed um, in uh, overhead uh, costs here or indirect costs I have identified here is the insurance property taxes supervision here and depreciation. And what we've, what we've done here we have to separate out our uh, variable overhead costs here. Those are the variable portion. That's what varies here uh, for the period here. And then from, uh, from our fixed amount that's what's fixed here for the period here or for the fixed costs here. So our variable amount here we added $70,000 and our fixed uh, overhead here at $102,000. Now the variable overhead is as is a result here of this construction process. So that's tied to our construction process. The variable amount here is 70000 Now the fixed overhead for the uh, construction here is estimated here at 50% here of this total fixed overhead. So we only have an estimate here. Um, the fixed overhead uh, for our, pro our constructing our machine or building a machine here would be 50% here of this total amount here of $102,000. So let's go and look at how we would uh, assign these uh, overhead costs here. Now first or assigning no fixed overhead. That's our first alternative here. We wouldn't assign any fixed overhead here to the machine construction or the building of this self-constructed machine here. So what would be included in here in the machine cost would be our direct cost here of $55,000. Remember there was our labor and material here. And then we'd also include the variable cost here because that uh, was re result here of this construction process. If we didn't uh, take on this uh, uh, building this machine here, we wouldn't have experienced here these variable costs of $70,000. So our total machine cost here is $125,000 here. Now, uh, the expense for the period here, we're just going to put that here as our fixed over here, here at 100%. So our expenses, we would, we would experience those here at $102,000 here. Now, this is the argument here. When the argument for no fixed overhead is that it assumes the company will have the same cost if it constructs the asset or not. So it doesn't matter. You construct the asset or not, you're still going to have the same costs. Now the argument against no fixed overhead, when we mean no fixed overhead, we're applying no fixed overhead to this machine here. And so the argument is that the uh, if against no fixed overhead is that it understates the initial cost, that's the initial cost here of the machine, and results in, in inaccurate future allocations. That would be for a depreciation in the future here. And it understates income in the current period here because we have greater expenses here. Uh, if we don't, if, since we recognized all our fixed overhead here as expenses, and that reduces our income here in the current period. And it understates the capitalized amount 
and of the asset here. As a result, we're going to have lower depreciation expenses here in the future, and that's going to give us a more of an inaccurate future allocation here of our expenses. Now let's go and look at the case here where you assign a portion of the overhead. In this case, we estimated it here to be 50% of that total overhead. And that you typically call, uh, consider here as full costing, and that's a pro rata portion here. So let's looking at our machine costs here. Again, our total amount here, our direct cost, $55,000, and our variable amount here, $70,000. Now we assign our fixed overhead here at uh, 50 percent or fifty one thousand dollars that's half of the hundred and two thousand dollars a total overhead here so our total machine costs here hundred and seventy six thousand dollars now uh, for the expenses here for the period let's just assume that that fixed overhead here would be it, it would be fifty percent here of the fixed overhead here and uh, fifty one thousand dollars here half of the overhead now what this does here the current exp uh, the current expenses here are reduced here you can see our current expenses here are reduced compared to uh, using the uh, assigning here a portion of our overhead compared to our expenses here when we didn't assign any overhead. So our current expenses here are reduced. It increases the current net income. So lower expenses here, greater net income uh, compared to the no fixed overhead. So when we had no fixed overhead here in our machine up here, we didn't apply any. Our expenses are greater here and compared to the where we assign our a portion of our overhead here our expenses are reduced so what we've done here when assigning a portion of our overhead here that attaches the full construction cost to the asset or the manufacturing cost so our our machine here is uh, we got a, a more a, a full cost here whereas with the no fixed overhead uh, we wouldn't have the total cost here it's that that wouldn't be included. So you can see here, uh, no fixed overhead. You got a lower machine cost here, 125,000 here, compared to the uh, where you assign a portion of your overhead here, 176,000 dollars. So in this case, uh, assigning a portion of our overhead, we capitalize our machine here at a greater amount, and then as we depreciate it, we're going to have a greater depreciation expense. And the argument is that it gives us a more accurate cost here uh, when we're looking into the future years here. We have a more uh, more accurate uh, future allocation of our cost here. Now, uh, again, remember the machine here, that's, that's with the cap it's capitalized here and depreciated at either uh, whatever you come up with your cost here when you allocate your overhead. Now, this is the, uh, how would we take care of this here in the future here? Say we're in the business here and we're actually have a tool shop or we have some uh, shop where we're actually constructing our equipment or machinery or tooling here on a regular basis. So what we have to do in this case is the question here is establishing our percent of overhead. So uh, we have to come up with our established percent of overhead rate and that can, it's, in, let's just look at here, this uh, established percent of overhead rate is signed based on previous results and labor costs. Typically, you would you know what your previous results are for your all your indirect and your direct overheads here, and you know what your labor costs are when you're a, when you're running a project here. So what uh, uh, building a machinery here? So what you would do here is you take the overhead rate based on you would establish your overhead rate here based on direct labor costs here. So just say our overhead rate we had here at uh, the variable portion here was seventy thousand dollars and then our uh, a fixed portion here that we have identified was $51,000. So uh, totaling those two amounts together divided by the uh, direct labor cost here of $55,000. We're going to come up with an overhead rate here of 220% based on our direct labor. And that's what you typically use when you're working with these, uh, uh, when you're building your tooling or your self-constructed project or any manufacturing project. It's based on a percentage of direct labor here. So for our example here, let's just say in the future, uh, we have a machine here and we have to identify its manufacturing costs. So let's just say we had materials here of $30,000 and then we have direct labor. We know what that is here at $10,000. So our overhead, all we do is take 220% or the amount that we established here based on our previous direct labor here times $10,000, our direct labor amount here, and that gives us an overhead cost here of $22,000. So assuming, uh, uh, totaling our materials, our direct labor, 
and our overhead here that we assign we come up at a total machine cost there of $62,000. So that's typically how you would handle a, pro, uh, a self constructed asset in the future here. You have to establish overhead rate and it's usually based on direct labor dollars here and then you can apply your overhead rate to come up with your total cost here. All right, so that takes care of our problem here. Uh, and just again, just to go over it here, we had assign, you had the alternative here to assign no fixed overhead or to assign a portion of the overhead here. And the question is, what portion of overhead do you assign? And we just used our example here, 50%. But it can vary. It, it's whatever, uh, and it's, it's really based on past history if you're going to be in the business here to be constructing machines or tooling or equipment here. Based on past history, and either you can go with a full costing here or uh, no fix, uh, no a uh, no cost here assigning it to your machinery and equipment, and then you can see how it affects your expenses here in in both cases here. With uh, portion overhead cost, your expenses here are low. When you assign a portion of your overhead to your machinery, your expenses here are lower than if you don't assign any fixed overhead. So that's just a typical example here on how we'd have to take care of uh, self-constructed assets here and how you have to determine the costing here for self-constructed assets.